हेलो मिस्टर
সে তো ইয়েটার থেকেও হবে
ஹலோ কাইন্ডলি একটু ভিডিওটা অফ করে রাখুন ভিডিও আর মাইক দুটোই যেন অফ থাকে মিউট থাকে যেন সবার আই রিকোয়েস্ট অল দা পার্টিসিপেন্টস টু মিউট ইওর মাইক্রোফোন ইউ ভিডিওটা আচ্ছা ওনে আছে মানে সব জুড়ে গেল
Good morning, everyone. Am I audible to you? Today's webinar is on Alternative Dispute Resolution Mechanisms, a tool for speedy justice, issues, challenges, and opportunities. Our entire session will be recorded for YouTube and Facebook, and its link will be given in the chat box. I'd request all the participants to please mute your microphone while the session is going on. And if you have any queries regarding the presentation, when the speakers are giving their presentation, please just give your message or any queries in the chat box. Thank you for cooperating with us. Wish you a very pleasant afternoon to one and all present in this international webinar on Alternative Dispute Resolution Mechanisms, a tool for speedy justice, issues, challenges, and opportunities. I, Srelshi Jana, Assistant Professor of English at Halvia Law College and the moderator of this webinar, welcome you on the behalf of entire Haldia Law College fraternity. Haldia Law College was established in 2002 under the humble patronage of Dr. Lakshman Chandrashet as it serves as one of the pioneer institutions of the country in the field of law. Haldia Law College, an institution of Indian Center for Advancement of Research and Education, I care, is affiliated to the Vidyasagar University, West Bengal, and approved by the Bar Council of India. The academic foundation of this college is built on the principles, ethics, and morals in the purest sense. In terms of success, the college has ranked 13 in the first 15 leading law colleges in India, which was published in June 2008. Outlook Niels Company ranked second in the top 10 law colleges in India by Higher Education Review, Law College Special on 2019 and was placed in the 14th, fourth position by Higher Education Digest on 2019. 
The highly advanced curriculum of five years integrated BA LLB honors course, three years LLB course, and two years LLM course are offered by this college, making it one of the few premier law institutes in the Eastern region of India that extends all the above mentioned courses simultaneously. Besides offering these courses, the college also offers company secretariat course. Without further delay, I would like to introduce Dr. Lakshman Chandrasheth, Honorable Chairman, ICARE, and Haldia Law College, former Honorable Member of Indian Parliament, and former member of West Bengal State Legislative Assembly. However, due to certain unavoidable, unavoidable circumstances, he is unable to be present in this webinar. However, he has wished his grand success for this international webinar. Thank you. This webinar, Alternative Dispute Resolution Mechanisms, a tool for speedy justice, issues, challenges, and opportunities, is going to be an interactive one, as the esteemed speakers will enhance us with their knowledge and experience. In a rapidly developing society, Human needs are bound to multiply, resulting in a conflict of interest. People become more conscious about their individual rights and litigation becomes an inevitable part of their life due to the rising incidence of disputes among them. The problem is further compounded when there is a lack of discipline in the litigation process. A judicial mechanism find it difficult to cope up with the enormous caseload. Alternative dispute resolution 
is the procedure for setting disputes without litigation, such as arbitration, mediation, conciliation, and negotiation. Since 1990s, many American courts have also increasingly advocated for the use of ADR to settle disputes. The Center for Public Resources in New York, USA, played a leading role in the movement towards ADR. It was assumed that the high cost of litigation and prolonged time were the misuse of public resources. Therefore, a number of ADR techniques, which includes mini trials, have the main focus on arbitration, mediation, and disputes resolution by negotiation. To deal with the situation of pendency of cases in courts of India, ADR plays a significant role by its diverse techniques. ADR mechanism provides a scientifically developed technique to the Indian judiciary to help in reducing the burden of the courts. ADR is also founded on fundamental rights, especially Article 14 and Article 21 of the Constitution of India, which deal with equality before law and the right to life and personal liberty, respectively. The objective of ADR is to provide socio-economic and political justice and maintain integrity in the society. As enshrined in the preamble to the Constitution of India, dispute resolution is a process that implies the causes of conflict as well as the education of such conflicts. However, many people are denied or are unable to access the formal system of justice on an equal level with the others for some reason. Everyone has a right to access formal state justice. Equal access to justice is one of our most basic rights as the rationale behind the present webinar is to make the people aware of the advantages of the ADR system as an effective justice delivery system. Madam, can you call them? Without much ado, we are moving on to our first speaker, Honorable Justice Tofikuddin Sir. He was the judge of Calcutta High Court. He was a former inquiry officer of Bose Institute, Kolkata. He was guest lecturer at Alia University, the Calcutta University, and Midnapur Law College, West Bengal. He was the chairman of OBC Commission at Andaman and Nicobar Islands. 
He was the vice chairman of Leswig. Presently, he is the academic advisor of Haldia Law College, West Bengal. Uh, so please. Good afternoon to all of you. I find it extremely pleasure to be a part of this onious ceremony on the topic which is rather one of the most that effective dissolution. Now excused for some omissions and commissions, but yet I think as a beginner of law, as well as a learner of law, that I should get opportunity to share my views with eminent participants who were having extraordinary dexterity over the length, breadth and depth of the legal aspects. Now, let us come to the nomenclature of ADR, word by word. Alternative is including a term which is in place of another. Similarly, dispute is a term which connotes bickerings between two or more parties. And lastly, resolution indicates a solution. So therefore, alternative dispute resolution is a mechanism which is, to some extent, supplementary to court proceedings. But nevertheless, it does not supplant the court proceedings. At least, it may be asserted. Now, it is very much known to all of us that Indian judiciary is one of the oldest judiciary in the country. And its name and fame is spread far and wide all over the world. Regarding Indian judiciary, I shall step down later on. But firstly, I like to add whether ADR system is prevalent throughout all countries in the world. At least it is not known to me whether it is followed in every country in the world. In my humble knowledge, I find that it is prevalent in Pakistan, Canada, UK, USA, Sub-Saharan African countries, Bangladesh, and of course India. So now the question is how this mechanism can come to help the needy and the poor. I have already stated that Indian judiciary is one of the oldest judiciary in the country. But it is equally correct that Indian judiciary is now limping at a snake's pace to render justice to the justice seekers. What for? There are a good number of reasons. This is not the place to dwell extensively on all the causes and reasons. But to some extent, I think that a mention is a bit necessary. Docket exploration is not a new term nowadays, so far as Indian judiciary is concerned. National grid, data grid of 
judicial system shows that about 73 lakh cases are pending right now now should we see only dependency figure and wait without for any solution no we should extract the best out of the worst how the matter can be tackled at least to some extent so that the wounds and pains of the be assessed area is a technique to resolve disputes and disagreements between transacting parties its general principle is that it is required a third party to settle the proceedings disputes between connected and transacting parties is <coughs> it is not adversarial litigation rather it may be termed as voluntary process mechanism its main aim is to prevent hostility among the fighting parties and the purpose is easy access and speedy justice to the down trodden people and needy people in the background we may look forward to article 14 article 19 and 21 of the constitution on three such pages of the constitutional articles practically the edifice of alternate dispute resolution mechanism stands its primary aim is to lower down to clear up the backlog of the court cases we may recall the famous case of salem advocate bar association versus in in of india where honorable apex court propounded that if there is any element of settlement which may be acceptable to the warring and fighting parties an attempt should be made at the first instance whether it materializes or not that is altogether a different question but at first lot an attempt should be taken out for such major of alternate dispute resolution now let us try to trust the origin of the ads system in india so far as indian judiciary is concerned previously what we see there was coolers and people of the society used to live in joint families with their respective clans when caste system became prevalent dispute among the coolers rear its heads their heads but sometimes those used to be resolved by the family members head and the clans but that was not very suitable Thereafter came the setting up of trade association. The head of such association, called president, used to resolve the disputes between the parties. In pre-independence area, when we are living in the realm of big shahs, we found drastic changes in the administration of India. in 1772 courts were empowered to refer the disputes to arbitration either at the request of the parties or at the instance of the courts in 1959 civil procedure court came but it did not yield very good results then came indian arbitration act 1899 followed by ultimately 1940 arbitration act but those who were not serving 
the purposes soundly. In 1937 also, Geneva Convention was signed and Arbitration Protocol and Convention Act 1937 was passed. But that too was not quite up to the mark. After independence, <clears throat> Arbitration Protocol and Company Convention Act 1937, I'm sorry, Convention Act 1937, the Arbitration Act 1940 was brought in force. But that was also not meeting the aspirations of the people. Finally, in 1996 came the Arbitration and Conciliation Act 1996. These are the roots of Islamic in, in brief. Now let us come to the various forms of dispute resolution mechanisms. One is arbitration. It is a process like court proceedings of solving an argument between the people. But regards of civil procedure code or Indian Evidence Act are not totally followed there. Are not totally followed there. <clears throat> arbitration means a matter whether administration by a permanent arbitrary institution or any body set up for the purpose. In the state of Jammu and Kashmir, the first day of the Pandi, the Supreme Court propounded that arbitration is an important ADA process which is to be developed and encouraged. Different kinds of arbitrations are ad hoc arbitration. This is used primarily in case of commercial disputes. Then from institutional arbitration, it is mentioned in an agreement that with the name of the institution, that in case of a dispute, the matter shall be referred to such arbitration. Contractual arbitration, which is found in a large number of cases in our country nowadays, in agreement that is or any dispute shall be in defense of arbitration. There are some arbitration. First track arbitration. In this type of arbitration, it is very rigidly followed. Time is given and laxity is not available easily. Then came a very important aspect of alternative medicine resolution, one of the mechanisms, that is called mediation. Mediation is a voluntarily structured process. It, the master of this process is none else but the warring parties themselves with the, help, with the help of a neutral third person who is called mediator. He is usually, he should be a trained mediator according to mediation committee report passed in 2000, way back in 2005 by the Honorable Supreme Court. They are given 40 hours training and they are usually appointed as mediators. They have no power to impose any decision or any conclusion. They facilitate the process of solving the process by the parties themselves this much. We may give one example. So far as mediation is concerned, in our lower classes in chemistry, we have read the preparation of oxygen. Potassium chlorate is a chemical. It is mixed with manganese dioxide. And at certain temperature, it is heated. Then, potassium chlorate disintegrates and oxygen emanates. But the characteristics of the manganese dioxide remains same as before. Then, what is the use of manganese dioxide? It simply helps for a temperate decision to emanate oxygen. It acts as a catalyst. It accelerates it. Similarly, mediator is an external of It helps parties to talk out their 
out of their own an acceptable conducive and good solution with a win and win situation <clears throat> then came conciliation conciliation is also to some extent similar to <clears throat> mediation but it is voluntary flexible confidence interest based but in case of mediation the mediator cannot first cannot give any solution the parties have to search out the solution whereas in the middle of the conciliation the parties can seek for opinion from the counselor to give a suggestion which may not be binding to them then this is the main difference between the parties then came another wing of adr system that is lok adalat the establishment of lok adalat under the legal service authority act 1987 is one of the other means of this to the result it means it means people's court that the people are the master they are the judges the lok adalat is an old form of adjudicatory system prevalent in india also it is based on gandhian principles <clears throat> its strategy is to deliver informal cheap and expeditious justice in the famous case of abdul hasan and national legal service authority versus delhi vidyut bhavan and others the honorable delhi high court highlighted the significance of the lok adalat system as an alternative dispute resolution mechanism now in short let us go to the merit pages in arbitration the parties can select what procedure and domestic rules will be applicable i am giving one example in an arbitration case the parties may decide whether evidence is to be given or evidence is to be dispensed with simply on the basis of documents the hearing is to be conducted like this you get in a case is hundreds of hundreds of this fall of without much delay and scanty with scanty expenses ADA allows parties to work together with an independent one arbitrator or a panel of arbitrators or mediators. ADA is that it is not it is to be granted the decision of the parties will never be there is some some media also which are very interesting thing it should be mentioned a bit ADA does not allow need to a resolution it means you can time and money still ultimately you have to the court the part is an unfamiliar process so parties are not used to the part of idea they may be sometimes depending on and that by fully statement is used is observed statement is used is made legal recognition this system has progressed in indian statutes now civil procedure code 198 according to order 32 it says the scope for compromise and the degree evolved from the time is not available advent of multinational corporations now we are watching 
a number of such corporations are coming up to invest and establish business. These businesses are dynamic in nature. Therefore, disputes should be provided with such a mechanism that the business can flourish and the dispute can be nipped to the bar immediately. Now, much said, much done about ADS systems, but has it reached the doorsteps of the rural area? Whether the general mass are aware of the significance of the ADS system or its utility or its gravity? I may be excused in passing my comment that perhaps a good cross-section of ordinary people are, are not aware of such ADS systems. Therefore, I think that some reason needs to be talked about for the ADS system. Courts your right to convey directive for action of ADR mechanism in the parties. And the quest part, and they should take the lead roles. They should make it a point and try to convince the warring parties that it is very cheap, time saving, and it creates, it forbids, it stops hostility between the parties. It brings forth a friendly bond of solution, everlasting solution. Awareness can be brought by holding seminars, webinars, workshop, etc. Even in rural states, panchayat areas, or in very interior places, so that public can have a grasp over the matter. Training of ADR personnel should be enhanced in block levels, panchayat levels, such training should be imparted. And to do this, the leading role should be taken by the universities and colleges. I think that it is my personal opinion, it should be done. That apart, in our educational curr curriculum, I think that ADR system should be included. That's a very important topic, and much thought should be given on these topics. Judicial offices in the lower courts, particularly, should be sensitized so that they can give top priority at the first instance to refer the cases to India. It should be their solemn and bounding duty, I think. It is of case. Mechanism will be made more viable mid system should be spread to panchayat level and rural all sorts of establishment where a small number of disputes are taken up for solutions. Not everyone can afford litigation as it is expensive. So public should be made aware that it is less expensive and not long time conducive. <clears throat> the conclusion arrived in the ADL system should be binding on the parties. <clears throat> Next comes <clears throat> another aspect. We are crying hoes, we are accusing judges, we are accusing judiciary, the judges are not delict. But the, the judicial system alone and the judges alone are responsible for this. It is a debatable question. I don't want to drag the matter into a controversial forum. But nevertheless, I think that some ancillary aspects should be taken care of. Number of courts should be increased 
In foreign countries, let us look to America or Germany or England. Judge ratio population, judge population ratio should be considered. Let us examine in India almost 135 crores are <clears throat> our numbers. How many high court judges are there? 1094. That is not the question. About 50% of the judges post are then in vacant. Similarly, are lower courts also. So I think the number of courts should be increased, number of vacancies should be filled up. Overall system should have a real look. Where is the disease? Where lay the disease? Cases of adjournment should be controlled. The simple emergent situation or emergent condition, the adjournment should not be allowed. This term is a vague term. If anybody is unable to present a case on a particular point of time, a parallel person should be competent enough to fill up the gap so as not to allow the proceedings to be dragged on for an indefinite period. Another aspect is that it is well nigh time to think over the creation of a special benches in the Honorable Supreme Court. I think it is absolutely my personal opinion because nowadays we are watching on political matters of some other politically tainted matters, the Supreme Court is getting overburdened. As a result, what we see, the ordinary litigants are not getting justice in time in civil matter or criminal matter. So, it is my personal opinion that there should be a trunk, there should be some exclusive benches for trials of those cases for which the poor and ordinary parties are languishing, are waiting decades together for relief. <clears throat> now, let us examine and compare the systems of ADR with the judicial process. Judicial process is an adjudicatory process. Arbitration is quasi-judicial. Mediation is a negotiated process. Judicial process is controlled by provisions of law. <clears throat> but arbitration is controlled by the provisions of arbitration and council in 1996. And mediation not specifically controlled by any statute or something. Of course, there should not be some illegal tent of any application of law. Judicial process is actual in nature, where mediation is collaborative in nature. Personal appearance in judicial process is mandatory, whereas in other arbitration or mediation, it is not only arbitration it is not mandatory. But personal appearance is one-to-one -one talk in mediation. It is the most fundamental principle. Because the parties have to interact over their dispute. They should take part. They are the main judges for their own causes. With the help of the accelerator and independent third party mediator. <clears throat> A formal proceedings is held in public in arbitration. Whether in public the proceedings is run in court. But in non-judicial and informal proceedings is held in public for mediation. In court case, decision is appealable and is subject to challenge section 34 that in terms of an settlement is final not available. In court cases, there is no opportunity of talking directly. Similarly, in arbitration, but Parties are free to talk to each other. 
He can sit either jointly or can sit separately. Before the parties that please try, if an amicable solution is available, that it will be best to do. In this system, nobody is vanquished and nobody is the conqueror. 
Both sides bury the hatchet out their own and be friends once again. It creates a bond of friendship and creates a situation where pleasure and happiness rear their heads for all times to come. It is an informal process. <clears throat> quick and responsible economy and all these things. <clears throat> I will not take much of all your kind. Remaining speakers are there. Now permit me to conclude by saying my a few words. Is it not possible to play that follows? Let's explore the possibility for testing two hearts of disputants eventually so they can accept the settlement gleefully to nip the dispute in the bar permanently. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. It was really an enriching and engaging session. Thank you so much, sir. It was really an enriching and engaging session. Justice, sir, as highlighted on the fact that still there are some people who are quite unaware of ADR system. He has also stressed on the fact that cases of adjournment should be controlled. Ordinary litigations are not getting time for civil and criminal matters. Our next speaker is Honorable Judge Mohammad Abdul Halim. Sir, uh, are you ready for the session? Yes. Uh, can you hear me, please? Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Audio. Yes, audio. Yes. audio. Audio. Thank you. So, floor, floor to me, right? Hello. Yes, sir. Am I audible? Yes, I, I I can hear you. The floor is to me right yes. now. Uh, yes, sir. Uh, or you will introduce something. Uh, yes, sir. I'm going to introduce now. It's a great uh, pleasure and honor for us that uh, we are having Honorable Judge Mohammad Abdul Halim mm -hmm. with us in this session. Uh, he is popularly known as Judge Halim. He has been working as a judge since 1998 and is now posted at Anti-Terrorism Court, Chittagong. Bangladesh as district judge. He has completed his LLB with honors and LLM from Dhaka University, started his career as a lawyer before joining as a judge. He did his second master's of laws, measuring in eight years from Loyola Law School, Los Angeles, USA. 
A very well-known reputed ADR personality, Charles Halim, was trained at San Francisco. He has traveled to Russia, Ukraine, Belarus, India, Thailand, USA, and many other nations for professional and educational purposes. Without much delay, I would ask uh, Sir to please continue uh, with the proceedings further. Over to you, Sir. Please. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> Honorable Chairman, I care and HLC, Dr. Laksh Lakhan Chandra, Honorable Justice, my Lordship Tofik Uddin Sir, Professor Dr. Manoj Kumar Sinha, Director of Indian Law Institute, Principal in Charge, and other faculty members and their participants. Assalamu alaikum, namaskar. I am Judge Hali from Bangladesh. Uh, actually, I was very deeply hearing uh, my Lordship's speech. What I should say, after his speech on mediation, I am nobody here at all. <laughs> sir, sir categorically has pointed out all the matters. And then before going to start the topic, I should, uh, I want to clear one thing. Here is our uh, justice, sir. I am not a, not a teacher, not a speaker. I am just thinking myself as a participant. And I have come here just to share some issues with you, nothing else. Because our Lordship is here and our Lordship on, uh, uh, covered all the matters. In spite of that, we should, I should go forward on the topic. Before going to start, I should uh, say just to uh, sentence about me, I am a jazz uh, district and session just now. I am working for the last 24 hours, uh, 24 years. And apart from that, I am a mediator. And I have a center, it's a Bangladesh International Mediation and Arbitration Center. That's from introduction from my side. Let's uh, uh, come to the topic. You see, the topic is very interesting today. ADI mechanism, tool for speedy justice this this sentence or this portion of this sentence is very significant really. it denotes two sense at one time one is that it it it, it, it denotes the benefit of ideal mechanism similarly it denotes and the demerits of existing trial system of a country if I give you an example, trial system of Bangladesh or trial system of India, whatever. So, you know, we have a very, very settled trial litigation system, right? If you want to have, uh, to, if you want to get some remedy, you must go, the, go to the court for get a remedy. And if uh, anyone from this panel or this uh, participant ever visited a Court, you you easily see that the, what is happening there. Thousands of people are in the court to get the relief. They are waiting years after years. Sometimes five, ten, eleven, five, ten, twelve, fourteen years, fifteen years, twenty years. Right? Even in a partition case, the party has to wait generation after generation. So what should be done? Should you wait for that? No. Now, the world, the globe has been changed very rapidly. So there is alternative ways to get a relief outside the court. And today, we are going to discuss about these tools, this system, right? ADR stands for Alternative Dispute Resolution, as you all know, I presume. Alternative Dispute Resolution, that is the solution of a dispute in the alternative ways, alternative, in the alternative ways, in the matter of solution. It is not the alternative to the court system. I am not telling you that the ADR system is the alternative system of existing trial system, not that. 
it's a, just an alternative way to get a relief, right? So what's that? Uh, I, 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 I draw attention of the host. Can I use the uh, uh, PowerPoint? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Absolutely, sir. Just a moment. I... Uh, just so I'm one second. But can you can you see? No. Uh, no sir. Not not yet. No sir. I'm, uh, <laughs> and the first time in uh, Google Meet, sir, I'll use Zoom platform. Okay, okay, sir. No issues, sir. No issues. No, sir. Sir. Now you can see. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. It's visible. You can see, right? Okay. Okay. Oh, sir. You can see, right? So, sir, yes. mechanism, right? Okay. I'm coming. So, just a just bit. So, I represent a uh, B mark, you know, I, I have a uh, firm like this. It's so just uh, information. BIMEC, Bangladesh International Mediation and Operation Center, we have this center, right? So, I am. Uh, uh, this point, so mechanism. It's a new approach, right? This is. So this is a flight. How can you say? Or can you? How can you describe it? Very short in a short sentence. A system functioning outside of the code to resolve the dispute with the help of a third neutral third party. Our our lordship has point has pointed out rightly. So it is. What is that? It's a system, very easy. It's a system functioning out how why are functioning out of the court, out of the legal system, right? Or or in US legal proceeding, out of the legal proceeding. Why to resolve the dispute? How with the help of third party? So you see, it's a dialogue-based uh, proceeding with the presence of a third party, and we call him as a mediator. Right, in the case of mediation, in the arbitrator, in the case of arbitration, in the conciliator, in the case of conciliation, whatever it is. But important is that we have a third party. And what's this? This is the scenario of the end, the, at the end of the day, at the end of the day of uh, mediation or ADR, we give a hug. To each other, each other, we we can we can uh, handshake with others. What is very very rare case in the trial system? Why I'm telling this? Our sir is there, but still then I'm telling this. Judgment in the lower court is not a judgment at all. Finally, because they have to, we have there is a scope of appeal, so we have to go to the appellate court for the final education. We have to wait till the uh, verdict from the apex court because you don't know whether the other side goes to the uh, appellate court or not. You don't know at the first stage, right? At this stage, you you, are, you will get you will have the notice. So, what if, when the adjudication is finally verdicted from the Supreme Court or the apex court, then you can get the remedy. But in mediation system, in mediation system, we can get this remedy. After one or two sitting like this, this is the this I'm coming. Type of video, our uh, uh, extensive lordship has uh, 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 pointed out very correctly, so I'm not going at that. Arbitration, mediation, negotiation, conciliation, you see, and this is the arbitration, you see, start said, I'm just uh, adding one or two line with him that in the arbitration is nothing but a uh, delegated part of the court is a semi 
formal process. Right mediation is one-to-one -one discussion with the help of the third party. And here the difference is like that. The parties himself are the decision maker. So in the court system, you see, when a judge gives a verdict, the parties have nothing to do. It's a mandatory, right? So parties are not at liberty to take part in making their decision. But in mediation, the parties themselves choose the mediator. They take part in uh, all about discussion and they take their own decision. Here is the beauty of the mediation, right? Nature of mediation discussed this voluntary confidential third party uses are already pointed out. So I'm not going this. Negotiation are already uh, discussed. Conciliation also differences and sir categorically discuss the difference, right? So I'm not going there. I am just uh, 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 showing you one slide. This is the litigation, arbitration, mediation, you see. This is the public record in the case of public record hearing service. So your team, uh, you, you can see mediation, winning sessions are rightly said. So I should say one point that what are the benefits? Why people are coming before the umbrella of uh, under the umbrella of mediation or alternative disposition? Why they should come? Although they have a very good trial system, why? The main reason is that in our trial system, one party has to lose and the party has to win. In the same case, both the parties are not possible. Uh, it is not possible to win for the both of them. But it is the only system in ADR system. The parties, both the parties can win, and we call it win-win situation, right? And another beauty of this ADR uh, uh, is like that. It's a it's a time-saving process. If you go to the court, you have to wait many years, and if go, if you uh, observe the process of ADR you just settle your case one or one or two sessions right so as it is very time saving so it is also money saving process because these the more adjournments the more involvement of hosting right so as it is here yeah, uh, the in mediation process the uh, process is ended in one or two or three sessions right so you have to uh, uh, you have to spend less money comparing other courses so now this is important and this is the procedure i i, I just actually want to say sir uh, uh, I, I don't know just sir whether sir uh, pointed or not all of we know the legal proceedings right you have to file a case Shaman, shamaning the other side, appearance of the other side, then settling the case, issues, uh, uh, pH, the uh, evidence, right? Then arguments, judgments. Here in the uh, mediation process, just only very few, we have to take some very few process. Filing the claim, just you have to file the claim, notifying the other uh, counterclaim, discussion, settlement, and you have to you have to claim the uh, you have to file the claim to the arbitrator, to mediator, or the arbitrator to the mediator, or the mediation firm. The mediation firm or the mediator notify the other side. They will. They, he has to be appeared. Then settle discu uh, discussion, settlement, and pay and go. Pay and go is not in India region. In, in my Bangladesh uh, Bangladesh perspective perspective because we we don't have any mediation act. So we the people of bangladesh just uh, do our mediation after the settlement that means after the awarding we started them to pay after the settlement we just started them to pay the dues and end the, end, end the matter because if we 
uh, make them pending, the other side may not obey that, uh, may not be bound by this, uh, may, may, be, may breathe this award, right? So here is the defect in the state of Bangladesh because we don't have mediation law. That's why the, this award cannot be, this mediation award cannot be uh, executed in the uh, court. If anyone wants to go, he has to absorb the process of breach of contract again for the specific performance of contract again case. So we don't uh, want to that. What we don't want to have that. So we uh, we already discussed this money saving, time saving, women situation, cordial, sir, uh, uh, rightly said. So I am not going this. So which matter we can easily settle under the uh, uh, area, right? You see, all the commercial dispute we can uh, uh, settle, right? Bank loan, employment dispute, land dispute, family dispute, revenue tax, insurance issues. These are the uh, sectors where we can uh, practice the area uh, mechanism, right? You see, all the commercial in the commercial dispute, the parties to the parties, the time is very important. No party uh, wants to uh, watch the time for realizing their uh, dues, so they exactly uh, prefer this. And we can use this bank loan, right? In a, in a sentence, we can, I can uh, assure that if the remedy is money, monetary terms, why the remedy is monetary, monetary matter, money matter, everywhere you can settle the dispute. Because if the monetary, monetary matter, is, matter comes to the dispute, so it's a matter of discussion. And if the discussion is succeeded, then it will be settled. This is the, just in a sentence where we can use the mediation, right? And here, the mediation is skill and preparation. I think both uh, the, the participants, maybe the, uh, uh, medi maybe the mediator profession, mediation professional, or like others, if someone wants to be a mediator, or with a mediator has to have to have some preparation for uh, mediating the case, right? This is this is on behalf of uh, this is for the mediator. This being the brief, right? Suppose I'm a mediator, I'm a member of the uh, center. So either the party comes to the center or 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 comes to me if I am independent mediator. So receiving the brief, I I I receive the brief. Understanding the brief, right? What is actually going on here? Notifying the second party, I notify the second party, receive the uh, second party brief, then understanding the dispute, then informing the time and venue. And on the time fixed, I, along with the other parties, right, will be there for discussion. This is the preparation. Logistics support what we need for mediation. We need a decoded conference room. We need a conference room. In a court system, there is a court and its mediation. Basically, the legal system, we have legal aid, and you have also this type of uh, uh, system. Legal service may be this uh, term, and we have legal aid service. So here, there is a room, is a court room, not like this, but Lost, but area for conferencing room, for holding a mediation session, we need a very, very decorated conference room. And it is the uh, logistic control, control temperature, sound, it should be controlled, uh, AC room, or like control temperature, soundproof, uh, sufficient lighting, restroom or washroom, refreshment like tea, coffee, and every of this heading, has expansion if you ask me why because suppose it's a, in the session in the summer session there is no AC so party will be sweating so he is, he will be not be comfortable to discuss he still uh, many times much times there right so this that's why sound proof if you sit in a room where the sound is noisy sound comes from the other side other rooms so it is not be very very good uh, mediation session, right? 
this is the this is the idea. Medicine segment, most important. You have to uh, the matter is medicine process the discussion is a discussion this matter. Many of us, many of us think that it is not a matter, it is it is not important, it's not like the discussion. No, it is not it is discussion based, that's true. But you must close some stages, close some stages, right? Because you know, in the uh, developed country, there is a honors, master's degree, uh, award, uh, certificate are given to mediation courses. At least 40 hours course you have to do if you want to be a mediator. So, so there is a specific knowledge. There must have a specific knowledge about mediation. So mediation segment right means when you settle when when you are a mediator in a mediation session you have to follow this segment right number one welcoming parties opening welcoming parties you have to welcome the parties who are coming to you with uh, uh, for discussion right. As a British colony, India or Bangladesh or like this, we have the judges or the mediator have some tendency like that. We see the chair just like Jominder and the parties come. We just push the bell next and the parties come. This sound makes a, a fair to a fair to him if the parties themselves, right? So in USA or Europe or like other countries where the area forces is very developed, the mediator never does this kind of thing. I saw mediators just waiting at the main entry of the uh, uh, building, right? When the party comes, he welcomes, he, he takes him to the session, to the session room, right? Conference room. And one thing is that if you if you sit with the other part with the one party and just make laughing or make gossiping gossip, and other part if other party comes and he sees he watches you, he watches you that you are making gossip, you are gossiping with him, just he quit the position. You this wrong message goes to him that you may be biased. Right. So, in the developed countries, the mediators, after receiving the one party, just keeping the session, keeping the chair, a room, he goes out to receive another one. And when? So this is the right track. Yeah, yeah, I should say. But in Bangladesh or uh, India, we we don't uh, do that. But someone uh, does like this. Next one is opening a space, right? It's a space given by the uh, mediator. The mediator has to explain, uh, explain who is the who is procedure he is going to follow, right? And he is on the very first time he introduces himself. He introduces uh, uh, the process like this, and of course he has to. Describe the process is voluntary, right? This I'm coming here like this. Describing the procedure and logic is supposed to be seeing parties interaction. So, turning the confidential. This confidential means that the parties are barred to use what he said the session or what documents placed before the session cannot be used as evidence in the trial system if the mediation fails. Listen, dear participants, confidentiality is the most important in mediation process. Confidentiality does not mean that the whole the process will be confident and the confidential is in, 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 in uh, confident, not that. It means the Documents what has been placed before the session, before the mediator, right? Or what is straight in the session. These words or these documents you cannot use as evidence in the case of trial if the mediation fails. 
Why I'm telling about that? If this is a not confidential, if this if this if this is not here, the party will not be at will not be free to speak what he has in his mind because he has fear in his mind, so he cannot uh, speak well. Listening, uh, next one is opening but discordance. So this this. From this here, this party, this, this is the uh, uh, portion of for the mediator. And second, this is opening by discordance. In mediation, we cannot never we, we never say the uh, plaintiff or defendant. We always say them as first party, second party, right? Discordance or discordance. So the mediator opens. A mediator uh, uh, welcomes or uh, requests him, requests the one party, first party, the claimant, right? To Open the fact, actually, what is what he wants, right? And uh, and and after finishing the uh, finishing the opening by the uh, first party, then the second party, like this, then the organizing the issues. It says it says uh, what matters to be considered, right? It, it, it is done by the mediator himself. It's a joint then discussion, joint focus, joint discussion, right? So everybody. Hello, they discuss here. This is very friendly, very, very friendly, and not any, any, just they're laughing, they're discussing what is like, like this. And although they're laughing, although they're making kidding, but at the, at, at the, in, at the end, they, 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 they offer a, uh, they place of offer some, there's someone just bargaining. It's a bargaining area, right? It's a bargaining area by the parties. And in, in, in this in, in this space, in this space, the mediator just watches, right? He watches what, whether it is whether he is the, uh, in track or not. Private pockets, if necessary, it is. It means that if some party points out to the mediator that I need to, why it is because every party has some strategy, right? He at the first stage he, and he keeps it for the end. That's why he sometimes he may desire to discuss with his lawyer. With their participants, never be confused of why there is lawyer here. You know, lawyer is of two two kinds. One is trial trial lawyer, one is mediation lawyer. Right. The trial lawyer basically trials in the court. I help the trials in the court and mediation lawyers is uh, it there's a difference between mediation lawyers and trial lawyers right uh, mediation lawyers uh, trial lawyers always on the basis of laws citation dlr right uh, all indian reports alr like this but mediation lawyers always helps the mediator and the parties to reach in a settlement rather rather he he, he never does uh, he, ne he never does uh, make citation like if this law is that this our episode has said like this not that sometimes party intends to discuss his lawyer or his aid right uh, a, a giver to uh, discuss his lawyer or uh, aid giver differently uh, privately that's the, that is the session reaching settlement after the third part discussion if the parties are uh, reaching a settlement this is the reaching settlement right then writing and reading over, and this settlement is written by the uh, uh, mediator himself. And what is what is uh, written, he reads over the parties, right? Signing awards, sign and closing statement. Closing statement given by the it's a thanks uh, thanks uh, right uh, remarks thanking remarks by the mediator. Thank you very much. Like this, he said like this. Thank you very much. Both the parties to uh, reach a settlement. But really, really, you have done a very good job because if you if you uh, go to the if you went to the court as a matter of money, like this is a, this is this is this like this, not not something else, right? So, personal in some in this still we see, we see, we saw the uh, segment, right? So here I am pointing out some personal qualification in mediation, right? One thing is retailing. Retailing means the parties, you know, parties when party describes 
the merit who, uh, after the uh, finishing of description by the parties, the mediator always just point out, you, miss, you said like this, this is blah, 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 blah. Just make good checking to the parties if the concept is clear to the mediator or not like this. Not like this, this is like this. You have to make practice, uh, you have practice patience for you. You must, uh, a mediator, if, if you are a mediator, you must give the patience for you. Right, you cannot be hard, you, you cannot make it hard. Yeah, please, uh, please end it quickly. Please, 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 quickly, not that, not that. Just uh, uh, give him time, right? Eye contact, eye contact is very important. Right, eye contact on the part of mediator is, uh, plays a very vital role when you speak to the first party. Just you concentrate your eye to the first party when you like this. You know, everyone, uh, everyone, you know, this. Then avoiding repetition. We have some bad habits. Sometimes some speakers speaks uh, some speakers makes repetition some words like. Like this, understand? Am I right? Am I right? Am I right? You got my point? You got my point? <laughs> like this. So, avoiding this repetition. Okay. Clear voice. Right? Mediator must have clear voice. You must speak clearly. Avoiding biasness. This is the uh, matter, right? You know, the, the source of the mediation process or the mediator, what should I say, yeah. is the trust of the parties. Both the parties must have trust on mediator. If the trust is frozen, so it breaks up. So mediator must be biasless. Always be impartial, right? Hundred percent professionalism. There is no scope to take it take it as it is. You have to show your professionalism because you always, mediator always think that it is not my last case because how I manage this, my profession is, my profession depends on them. If this mediation is a uh, fail due to my lack of qualification, he, uh, I may lose my profession. So a mediator must have 100% prof uh, professionalism, right? So these are the, these are the, uh, uh, so next, uh, next slide I'm coming. Barriers in mediation or area system, what you like to say, we have, we feel some uh, barriers like this. First of all, I, I said it's a lack of, although it is written in five, no, it's a lack of mindset of what I say, what I see. I'm, a, I'm a, being a judge and a mediator, I see that there is a lack of mindset of for sharing mediation in a society. So, uh, uh, his lordship pointed out rightly that it's a, a general mess of the people uh, 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 don't have idea about mediation. I do agree with Sir 100%. Yes, it is true. Our general people cannot have this idea about mediation. But uh, uh, the mediation, it, it is not the uh, demerits of the mediation, but it is the uh, lack of our uh, policy makers, lack of mindset of our policy makers, lack of mindset of our uh, uh, stakeholder, I should say, one in one word. Stakeholder means the lawyers, stakeholders means the judges, stakeholder means the parties themselves. Mindset is the main barrier because in the court annex, uh, court annex, in the court annex area, our judges think, oh, it is not working. I'm but I'm over burden. Why I shall do that like this? Many judges do like that. Okay. And in the lawyer, in the from the perspective of lawyer, lawyer community think, think that if the mediation is promoted, if the mediation process is working well, they may lose their brief. There's a misconception, but mindset of like this. And if and the mindset of from the side of the uh, party, uh, litigant people, they they have never are this name of this mediation or the area system, right? When the court advises him to go to the mediation table, he says, no, I'm not interested. So we all we should 
only should uh, uh, publicity, make publicity, publicity by the stretch, right? Publicity by the social changers, social workers, we can look at this. And I see this is the main variable, right? In the mediation table, uh, in the mediation session, which barriers faced by the mediators, like this is a long description by the party. When the party is given to chance to tell something, he takes much time. He loves to talk, right? Loves to talk. There is a problem here. Hot tempered by the party. You know, this is the anger between the parties. For example, brother and brother versus brother, right? If the dispute between the two brothers, right, in the matter of their party, making partition of their paternal properties, so there is a anger. So someone become angry like this, hard temper, sadness, sadness. Sometimes if the mediation session uh, uh, lingers much time, right? Some the people uh, lose their interest, the parties lose their interest, uh, mediator uh, lose, loses, loses interest like this. Ever rushes. Never, never mediator, never uh, uh, make it rushes. Have to. Suppose you are hired, you are hired for 10 to 1, right? So it may be 2, 3, but you, the mediator, cannot say that this time is finished. At the, at, the, at the middle of the discussion, you cannot, you are not supposed to say, this, my time is over, finished. Thank you very much. No. Okay. Emotion. The, the emotion has no value at all. Emotion has no value. The mediator don't have, don't have mediation. Mediator don't must have mediation or uh, other parties. Parties may cry, may weeping, like, so I am here, the mediator, I have no value of this mediation of like this. And this is a scenario. I just want to show you one thing. What is this exactly? Can you see what is? It? Can you see this? Hello. Uh, yes, sir. Yes, sir. We can see yes, this. Yes. Can you can you want to please uh, respond to what is this? Actually, uh, one part is one. Can can you share me what is this? What are you watching here? What is what do you watch here? What is that? Sir, it is a glacier. Yes, iceberg. Yes. Yes, it's iceberg, right? Huh. It's an iceberg. It's a ice over the water, right? You see. So this is an iceberg. Ocean. One part we are seeing and another part are under the water. We cannot yes, see. yes. And what part we can see is very little one, right? Yes, sir. So this is a, this is just like our case in litigating process. In a litigation, in a litigation, litigation process, we the judges, the whole matter never comes to us. So we just give our verdict because because in the litigation system, judge has nothing to do. He has to depend on the uh, evidence on record right evidence on record so these are we see like this one this part and we give this body in the litigation process that's why the other side is aggrieved and he prefers appeal right appeal means he is not satisfied with the judgment uh, given by me like this this is the meaning. this is the process in the litigation but in mediation or ADR system, this is the process, the parties themselves take part in. The parties know what is the defect, right? So they discuss all the matters here, yeah. all the matters. Hidden also express or hidden, every pros and cons of the uh, dispute is discussed in the uh, ADR table, mediation table, arbitration table, everything is discussed here. And party being 100% satisfied on his part, he go forward for setting, settle, for a settlement. Right? If he's satisfied, he goes to the settlement. So I want to say that 
After said but discussion by the parties themselves, they are taking their own decision. Mediator just uh, just uh, facilitating the parties. So what do you think after getting this settlement? After said but after said but discussion, if the parties uh, uh, take the settlement. Is there any possibility to make any appeal? What do you think? No, no, nobody. Okay, I'm, I'm sharing. Exactly, no, no, no needed at all. No need at all, because suppose X and Y, they have a dis they dispute over the matters, so they are discussing all the matters, and a decision making is a voluntary process. Nobody. A, a, a give pressure to him to make the decision, right? So he himself voluntarily coming forward to make the decision. So after this decision, nobody prefers appeal. They are whole, they are fully satisfied. And they, uh, the, and after the discussion, I saw, I, so I, I like this. After the settlement, this, this comes to. After the discussion, after the discussion, after the getting. And the settlement like this. And if and if it is goes to the court, suppose this is a dispute. If goes to the if it goes to the court, it is if it is able to the court in trial system, there will be lots of cases, lots of cases. First of entry entry level judges will give the body, then appeal, district court, then more appeal in the uh, high court, right? And, the, and then it may go to the uh, FX court, Supreme Court, appellate division, right, in my country. But, but in mediation, it is not possible. It is no need, not possible, I should not, I should not uh, say like this. There is no need at all. Here is the beauty of the uh, uh, area mechanism. So that's why nowadays, all the people from all the, in all the developed countries, uh, they are coming forward to oh, uh, the mediation or the uh, area area mechanism, right? And media area mechanism is a well settled, well functioning method in the world. In the world, in India, in, if I make comparison, India is in high position, better position than that of my country. You 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 have uh, you are, you have a bill right in uh, Parliament for enacting the mediation act, but we don't have, not yet we have such kind of thinking in, in my country. So uh, this, this are the, these are the ideas, right? While left, I, 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 I intentionally left some slides uh, for, uh, as our Lordship has pointed out, that that's why I uh, uh, avoided these slides just to Oh, don't make just not to make you a harass, right? To make the participants giving the pain because in the online there is a very difficult to uh, keep the uh, audience for two hours like this. Okay, so these are the uh, ideas. Uh, just I'm not uh, uh, I'm not uh, giving you the uh, teaching, not given. Just uh, uh, gather some information with you. Okay, if any question, please. Yes, this is this, these are the slides, and I. Yes, participants, uh, do you have any questions? You can raise it. Oh, never mind. Okay, okay, okay. okay nobody, <laughs> no, nobody have a, has any question. Okay, it's, uh, I don't know. I don't know. Uh, what else we... No question at all. Oh. Mm. Hello. Yes. Um, sir. Uh, good afternoon. 
problem. And thank you for your uh, various uh, speeches. And sir, I have a one question. Uh, welcome, most welcome. Okay, sir, how does mediation differ from the arbitration in oh, India? Yes. Very good question. Very good. Very good. Arbitration. Uh, our uh, lordship has point. I, I, I basically I skipped the slides uh, uh, because our justice sir is here, so I skipped that. But I am telling now this uh, on your question. Uh, it's a arbitration is a uh, less formal process. You know, litigation is a process, formal process, and arbitration is a less formal. It's a delegated power control by the court to settle a dispute, right? Here, the in arbitration system, the parties are not entitled to get their own decision. Arbitrator gives their decision. Okay. On the other hand, in mediation process, is a voluntary, okay, uh, and decision is made by the parties himself. So you must uh, 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 keep in mind, in the case of decision making, arbitrator, himself gives the decision and mediator doesn't give the decision. In other ways, parties in the arbitration, they are not taking their own decision, but in mediation, the parties in mediation are taking their own decision. Okay. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Welcome. Thank you, Nirpum, sir. It was a bit uh, a good question from your end. Uh, thank you so much, sir. Uh, we came to know about a lot from you. It was really an interactive session. Thank you, sir. For so spending... you one, one line from my side, one just one sentence. Can I add yes, one sir, sentence yes, sir. from my side? Yes, yes obviously. Thank you very much, uh, the HLC authority to invite me, especially with our Lordship, Tofik Sir. Tofik Sir, uh, very good afternoon from my side, and I'm very happy that you are here. <laughs> And you really, really, really my, my sincere thanks to you that you, after your lecture, that I, I, I had no guts to, <laughs> to say something that you have, as you completed every, every corner. So it is, uh, uh, if any question, uh, uh, you can give me, you, you can reach me in Facebook, Judge Halim, or in LinkedIn, LinkedIn, Judge Halim. Any question, anytime. I will be, I will be ready for making any answer okay most welcome in linkedin brother as well as in facebook yes yes Halim. okay thank you very much thank you, very, very. you have very very high quality of layers sir, 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 sir. no 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 sir, sir no sir no sir i i i i prepared i prepared lots of slides after your deliberation sir i had no guard to deliver my list because you completed everyone that's why i missed me i tell you sir you, you, you just, you, 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 you are awesome, sir. I tell you, sir. And nice to meet you again in another event, sir. And uh, I will uh, contact with you, sir. Welcome. Any other question? Any other question? Any other question? No. Can you say? Sir, my, sincere, my, my sincere gratitude to you, sir. Again, we will meet you, sir. And I cordially invite you, I cordially invite you to visit Bangladesh, sir, as my guest. In then I had the chance to have a election with you. When I was a delegate from Bangladesh, and I had the opportunity to have election with them. You are welcome to Indian and Haldia. Thank you. I have some I, I, I have some connectivity with the sir, uh, mediators. Uh, I uh, six months ago I had a uh, uh, I had a, a Zoom meeting with the Nirvana sir. This is the uh, mediators decision of uh, Supreme Court of India Nirvana. I had a program with them yeah. and I have some connectivity with some lawyers uh, of the uh, um, Indian India Indian uh, uh, law arena. Yeah. So we have some organization jointly with Indian lawyers mediators. So this very frequently we meet each other on Zoom due this pandemic season. But after the pandemic, okay. we, we must uh, uh, do some exchange program. And in that occasion, I expect you, uh, you to uh, in my country to my country as my guest, sir. I again my thanks to you, sir. 
Thank you. Thank you, participants. Thank you, Atudi, for inviting me. Thank you, sir. We are really enthralled. Uh, we are privileged and honored to have you in this session. Thank you. Bye bye. Okay, so nice. Our next uh, speaker is Professor Dr. Manoj Kumar Sana. He is the director of the Indian Law Institute, New Delhi. He did his doctorate in international law from Jawaharlal Nehru University, LLM from the University of Nottingham, and LLB from the University of Delhi. His areas of specialization include human rights, constitutional law, international humanitarian law, international refugee law, international criminal law, and international institutions. In 1998, he attended the 29th session of the International Institute of Human Rights in Strasbourg, France. He was offered the prestigious visiting professorship at Raval Wellenberg Institute of Human Rights and Humanitarian Law, Sweden, from 2004 to 2005. Professor Sinha had joined many prestigious institutions within India and abroad. He authored, edited, and co-edited many books, including Intellectual Property and Human Rights in India, Copyright in Digital World, Challenges and Opportunities, and many others. He also serves as a member of editorial boards of various reputed national and international journals. Sir, over to you, sir. Please, would you like to uh, share your views on this topic? Thank you very much, Sreshi and Jana. Jana. <laughs> yes, sir. Thank you, sir. Uh, Dr. Pratim Sarkar, and I believe the Honorable Justice Taufik Uddin was here and he has left. Uh, so, uh, so thank you very much, uh, uh, Dr. Pratim Sarkar, for inviting me. And uh, I will leave at SAP 2.25 uh, because I have some other engagement. But definitely for like you know, 25, 30 minutes, I'm here. I have... Uh, you might have noticed like dear participants you might have noticed like uh, i have chosen something and uh, for that i'm thankful for the dr Pratim sarkar that he agreed that i suggested okay, i'm not much expert on the arbitration law but how of course i will speak on the access to justice and human rights so that is the topic which is a little bit has been adjusted in the main theme broad theme of the conference on the access to justice and human rights when I talk about the access Thank to justice... Thank you very much, sir. It is a great privilege for us that you have uh, joined with us and hope all the participants, uh, they will be uh, enriched and benefited by your valuable speech, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Please carry on, sir. Thank you. Please. Thank you very much, Dr. Pratham, for like, you know... Uh, yeah, like when we talk about, like, just like I... Uh, but still, I can highlight the importance of the arbitration mediation, conciliation, negotiation. It's very important tool for resolving the disputes outside of the court, outside of the court. And that is very important tool and particularly in the international field. So if you in the international field, I'll start with the how, like, you know, particularly mediation, negotiation, conciliation, the other aspects of the settle, mood of settlement. It's so popular outside and that has been also reflected under the United Nations Charter. Under the United Nations Charter, like, you know, so as you know that when we talk about the uh, maintenance of international peace and security, uh, governance of the relations among the states, everything is governed largely by the United Nations Charter. That plays very important role. So how he, India has to conduct with the neighborhood particularly if in case of dispute or in case of fight, in case of other things, it has to govern according to the laws which has been prescribed under the international law. 
Most important part, which is like, you know, which fits in the broad theme of this particular conference, when we talk about the, uh, like, you know, mode of settlement of disputes. So this ADR is also a mode of settlement of disputes outside of the court, outside of the purview of the court, and which has been like, you know, I'm sure that honorable judges and other members might have spoken about the uh, uh, section 89 of the CPC, section 89 of the CPC, which says arbitration, conciliation, judicial settlement and mediation, that four important aspects which has been called there. And it says if in case of arbitration, the Arbitration and Conciliation Act of 1996 will be used. In case of the uh, Lok Adalat and others, it's a Legal Services Authorities Act and other acts will be applicable. So that is the like, you know, even the CPC, under the 689, which became effective from 2002, that is like, like talks about the out, like you know, settlement of disputes outside the court. Coming back to the international arena, so if a dispute is there, so international level also it is encouraged. Don't go for the fight. Find out a solution, which like you know we have been witnessing for last two three months between the Russia and Ukraine. You see that like you know, every time some diplomats is visiting Russia or Russia is going to the Russian representatives are uh, attending the international meeting. So important point which I have in my mind, which I want to share with you in the article 33. So like you see how to resolve the international disputes when we look into the international disputes, the importance of settlement of disputes, what they have emphasized, which we have to learn that specific settlement of disputes, specific settlement of international disputes outside. So there's a organization also international court of justice. There is a permanent court of international arbitration is also there, which has come much earlier than international court of justice so like if you dispute their state can take it to the international court of justice which india has done many times pakistan has done also against india even in the recent case in 1919 aerial bombing case in 1919 pakistan went to the international court of justice but when a dispute takes place so what charter what international law suggest under the article 33 the matter they say to find out a solution to seek a solution negotiation inquiry mediation conciliation arbitration judicial settlement resort to regional agencies arrangement or other peaceful means of their own choice so you see it outlines almost the eight grounds including arbitration conciliation mediation at the international level it's there so when we, we see that the importance of arbitration we see the importance of mediation we see the conciliation is there when we talk about the arbitration law particularly in the case of the indian scenario it's like you know it's a based method for the like you know which is invoked in large number of cases by the parties also so in most of the bilateral investment treaties you will find a clause inserted there for the arbitration so they don't want to go to the court they say in case of any dispute regarding the investment or any related issues uh, that has to be settled by the arbitration clause. So there is an arbitration agreement under the bilateral investment agreement. So whatever the bilateral investment agreement is there, there's a tremendous focus on the part of the government of India also, because India wants, like the government of India is very keen to develop institutional arbitration in India, institutional arbitration in India. And now we have a mediation bill which is pending, which is also coming. So, so arbitration, institutional arbitration is very important, which like, you know, in most of the cases, if, despite having bilateral agreement, disputes are taken outside for the arbitration, either in Singapore, Paris, London, these are the places where we go for the arbitration or like, you no. Know, multinational companies, they take us to the international arbitration. So government, particularly the Ministry of Law and Justice for many, uh, for longer time has been thinking seriously about creating institutional arbitration in India there. Now come to the, why like, no, even under the CPC, says that there is a scope. Even just uh, day before yesterday, I think yesterday, Honorable Supreme Court, in one of the case which is pending, has appointed two experts in Hart Luther, the case which was pending before uh, Justice uh, Sanjay Kishan call and also Su Justice Sudarshan. In that case, like, you know, they say they, the court has all, Supreme Court, just even in today newspaper, it has come exploring the possibilities, exploring the possibilities 
of like you know reducing the cases even in the criminal matters so there's an annexation and which has an amicus query is there so court is also contemplating seriously how to reduce the number of cases which is like you no know, keep on growing in number of situation if we consider today today uh, prior to the pandemic and during the pandemic and post pandemic so we have three phases pre pandemic during pandemic and post pandemic so what we see the during a pre pandemic period the around 3 crore cases were pending most of the cases in the lower level but 3 crores were cases were pending today it has crossed more than 4 crore in fact it's going to touch to the like you know nearly to the 4 crore 50 lakhs cases are pending so what we see the functioning of the court has been hugely affected hugely affected during this particular this pandemic Uh, the like uh, so during this particular pandemic and uh, that has led to the uh, like rethinking how to reduce the number of the cases where government is taking so arbitration becomes one important tool for that particular thing where court can like you know out of court settlement and the parties but like you know, of course parties are interested that there is a possibility of reducing the case there are a lot of methods which has been contemplated let me i'll come to the that point also let me come to the topic which i have chosen for today is the uh, so this is a just a uh, idea which i wanted to share with you the purpose of arbitration the modes of arbitration conciliation inquiry uh, mediation and series of things which i have discussed and we have also understood ki the arbitration mediation conciliation negotiation are important tool at the international level which has been also recognized under article 3 article 33 of the united nations charter we have understood ki there is like uh, under the cpc amendment section 89 also laid down there is uh, uh, that helps in the reducing the case method of arbitration conciliation judicial settlement and mediation there are four grounds has been mentioned under the cpc 89 is there i have also mentioned about the how the arbitration like you know we have 1996 arbitration act and there is a mediation bill which is pending which will come in the 2021 i believe in 2020 2022 sometime it will be there but it's a draft is already available on the website the another important topic which is very important which we also can see how alternative mode of settlement of disputes are getting popularity and particularly in the human rights field access to justice when i talk about the access to justice and uh, uh, what i mean the justice like you no know, uh, uh, justice should be available to everyone irrespective of the economic status irrespective of religion irrespective of the caste and that is and uh, what we have been noticing and we have found that there are large number of cases there are large number of situations the poor people weaker sections of the society uh, poor sections of the cases poor section of the society uh, poor sections of the society and under privilege they are not in a position to go appear before the court they are not in a position to appear before the court and it's very difficult and that is the reason we have certain change amendment has taken place in 1976 like you know this might have been discussed in the morning session and we have inserted section 39a of the constitution in 1987 we have adopted the legal services authorities act 1987 which makes like certain who are entitled for the uh, like you know legal aid or legal assistance which i'll take later so we see is lot so lot of development has taken place to open to make the court available to the every sector every everyone everyone including the weaker sections of the society and that has been made at the supreme court in number of cases which i'll just uh, highlight in a little bit later where court has categorically mentioned legal aid free legal aid is a fundamental rights or access to justice is a fundamental rights of the people and this is part of the integral part of the article 21 of the indian constitution some of the cases which i'll highlight and there take me to the uh, like when i talk about the access to justice uh, and human rights 
we have to understand one thing first what human rights means the first like what human rights means so you may have a number of uh, like you know uh, number of definitions number of ideas human rights for uh, for all of us it's important to know that though the courts in number of cases has its in own way defined human rights and put under the principle of non discrimination article 21 of the constitution and other there after the establishment of after the adoption of protection of human rights act 1993 so what do we see 1993 act has created a national body for the promotion national body and state body for promotion and protection of human rights so protection of human rights act has established national human rights commission and also state human rights commission in almost all states ex barring few states like arunachal pradesh nagaland and mizoram three states indian states are not having a state human rights commission but almost all states are having a state human rights commission and the and the national human rights commission functions in the center so that is it the point which i wanted to discuss with you regarding the human rights access to justice we'll discuss little bit but we like no when we discuss access to justice and human rights so first we have to understand as a young scholar as a teacher a, 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 a easy definition of human rights it can be like you know many times we get confused in the fundamental rights we get confused with the fundamental rights and human rights there are a number of things so when we look into the de a concrete definition of human rights we have to go to the section 2d of the protection of human rights act section 2d of the protection of human rights act defines what human rights means and it says clearly the human rights means rights relating to life liberty equality and dignity of the individual and the dignity of the individual guaranteed by the constitution guaranteed by the constitution or or embodied in the under the international covenants or embodied under the international covenants and enforceable by courts in india so the definition which we have human rights it has a uh, much wider it has both in uh, national and international it takes the definition of the constitution perspective and it also takes the definition of the international perspective which clearly says in international covenants enforceable by courts in india enforceable by courts in india so that is the definition we have human rights so we can say that like you know as a teacher as a student now we can say we have understood a definitional part of the human rights so human rights means rights relating to life liberty and equality and dignity of the individual guaranteed by the constitution we leave it here we don't need to go to the enforcement by courts when we look into that now if we have a rights which is mentioned under the part 3 of the constitution so right without remedies right without remedies is incomplete once you have a right then you must have a remedies like you know for the in cases of the violation of the individual rights individual must have a remedies individual must have a remedy and that remedy is if you like you know you look into the your own constitution our own constitution under the part 3 of the indian constitution which laid down number of fundamental rights starting from the 12 to 35 so article 12 to the like you no know, 35 which talks about the various uh, uh, like you know rights particularly 14 onwards so we see the fundamental rights and it also says under the article 32 in cases of the violation of fundamental rights enforcement when can we can invoke article 32 and article 226 of the constitution so we see that either the constitution has so right has so right has been recognized and remedies constitutional remedies is available itself under the part 3 of the indian constitution which is clearly there so right without remedy is incomplete right if right is there individual remedy is there and now we see so court remedy is there and we see that how indian judiciary over the years played very important role in developing the right jurisprudence particularly human rights or environment law jurisprudence we see in series of cases court has done 
right to now come to the access to justice access to justice which means we i'm talking about the free legal aid free legal aid to everyone they like you know each one has to have it's not the remedies which is available under the constitution and in that context a little bit in a minute or two we'll devote there what we see the after the establishment of the national human rights commission and the state human rights though it's not it talks about the arbitration procedure it doesn't talk about the uh mediation process it doesn't talk about the uh conciliation process but what it has which has brought individual much closer to the uh, state human rights commission and national human rights commission how because the complaint mechanism which is available under the national human rights commission is inexpensive you don't need to go and appear physically in the like there you don't need to hire a lawyer for that particular purpose a simple letter is stating the facts that what happened on that such a refusal of the uh, fir by the police custodial uh, like torture or anything so simply stating of course like you know a public servant has been involved if like you know the violation has taken place the public servant so if a person writes to the national human rights commission or a state human rights commission in case of the state human rights commission some way state human rights commission is not functioning effectively because of lot of reasons which we don't need to go uh, to, uh, in, 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 to in uh, our discussion but national human rights commission a person if simply he writes a uh, and writes a letter and he doesn't need to do anything subsequently he doesn't do to anything uh, subsequently so commission through the written communication so entire procedure is a, i can say it's alternate and effective it's a alternate and effective it's not like a court but it's like you know similarly it makes a recommendation where involved like everyone can approach national human rights commission and today if you see the website around 86000 cases in a one year the commission has received so large number of popularity so it has opened in case otherwise in the case of either somebody will take your case under the writ jurisdiction or public interest litigation for the public causes so there are a lot of procedural are there so court not only like a national human rights commission has become a is important tool in access to justice so some way is access to justice where is a procedure is inexpensive first second it's not lengthy it doesn't take a lot of time fourth it doesn't involve individuals too much in the entire procedure it's involve the persons who have violated the human rights and of course the recommendation is shared by the victim as well as the by the state authority in some of the cases when we talk about the access to justice what is important is like in some of the cases victims are so poor they need some kind of immediate relief or some kind of interim relief commission and court also commission and honorable court high court supreme court lower court also we see they have a power to give compensation so interim compensation so national human rights commission has granted in large number of cases compensation to the victim interim compensation before they decided so we see a alternative which is outside of the purview of the court the national human rights commission complaint mechanism is a very important tool particularly permission and protection of human rights so what we can say some way they complement each other like court also a national human rights commission and even in the many cases court has used the services of national human rights when i i talk about the access to justice so now the free legal aid which is also even article 21 which i'll highlight a little bit later so when we look into the international documents what we have seen that article 14 and article article 8 of the universal declaration of human rights and article 14 of the uh, international covenant and civil and political rights talks about the access to justice some way so article 8 just if i read article 8 of the universal declaration of human rights which says everyone has the right to an effective remedy what i have said everyone so some way the legal procedure which like you no know, honorable courts in india supreme court particularly has taken note the doors of the court are far away for the large number sections of the people in india how to make court accessible and that is the like no 39a has come legal services authorities act has come and it has opened the door of the court for everyone so the, everyone is very important and that has been documented 
that has been mentioned under the article 8 the most important human rights in, in instrument that is universal declaration of human rights which says everyone has the right to an effective remedy by the competent national tribunals for acts of violating of fundamentals guaranteed by the constitution similarly same thing is mentioned under the article 14 paragraph 3 of the international covenant and civil and political rights effective remedy and access to justice or access to court is mentioned in the international instrument the supreme court of india so i'll uh, the supreme court of india in particularly long time back in the in 1978 in mh hoskat versus state of maharashtra uh court has observed so i'm saying how court has also looked into the point which i have been highlighting so arbitration conciliation better like you no know, so lok adalat has become very important tool conciliation also under the legal services authorities it says like you know certain limits are there if you like you know lok adalat can become a fast tool for the settling of the dispute so supreme court has in the mh hoskat versus state of maharashtra air 1978 sc 1548 those who have interest they can read. the supreme court held in this case mh hoskat versus state of maharashtra the Supreme Court has hailed that legal aid to the poor and deserving, the legal aid to poor and deserving is part of personal liberty and as is enshrined in Article 21 of the Constitution. The court also uh, uh, has laid down the following principles in the number of in the cases and also in the Khatri versus the State of Bihar, AIR 1981, SC 2928, the Supreme Court again. In 1981, they said the right to free legal services is clearly an essential, clearly an essential ingredient of reasonable, fair, and just procedure for a person accused of an offense, and it is implied in Article 21. The court goes further and says, so this is the who has to provide? The state has to provide. Union government in a state, a state has to provide free legal. The court in Khatri case has mentioned another important observation. Another important observation which says that state government cannot avoid, the state government cannot avoid its constitutional obligation to provide legal services to poor accused by pleading. So generally like, you no know, government says we don't have fun. So by pleading financial or administrative inability, there is no justification. So court has made there in that particular case, in the Khatri case, it goes on in the case of the Sukhdas versus a Union Territory of Arunachal Pradesh. And we see ultimately what happened. We have, we have uh, detailed uh, legal services authorities act has been uh, adopted. So access to justice, when we talk about it's access to justice for the legal assistance, legal assistance, access to justice for the under trial prisoners, access to justice for the refugee migrant workers, unaccompanied minors, access to justice for the foreign national. So we see a wide arena it covers the where people are needed some kind of justice, like refugees or migrant workers or other people, they don't have money. So access to justice becomes very important for those persons in cases of there. Uh, when I look into the most uh, legal services authorities, so what is important if the legal, legal, if you look into the legal services authorities act in the object part, what is important? Some way we have a system. So now we have NALSA, SALSA, DALSA and TALUKA. There are decentralization on the top National Legal Services Authorities Act. Uh, like you know that, that that is there national legal services authorities then you have a state legal services authorities we have district legal services authorities and in the bottom we have we have uh taluka legal uh, like you know services there so they all have to provide legal assistance according to the section according to the section 20 uh, section 12 section 12 like you know uh, eligibility if it fits it says who are entitled for the legal aid and that is there so poor percentage of course is there certain con uh, economic condition is there but trafficked persons women they all are entitled for the legal aid is there but most important part which i feel when we examine any legislation and statute 
what is the legislative intent what is the important point which has been focused so legal so like i have said legal services authority you, many of you may not agree many of you may not agree that services rendered by the uh, district legal services authorities or free legal aid are not uh, are not effective some way you say you know lawyers are not taking it seriously there are serious issues involved honorable judge honorable uh, judge sir is here so there is a, like you know uh, some kind of serious flaws in there in the legal services authorities which like you know many point point and even poor people they are not keen to go they want to be repudged and so they have a right so like you know if uh, uh, if i say that purity of justice justice like you know if you a poor person is represented by incompetent lawyer and a rich person is representative or represented by a top-notch lawyer then you can imagine justice delivered by the court will not be pure that will not be stood on the taste of purity of justice so in light of the demand of purity of justice that poor person must be represented by competent person so so there are even so sometimes we say that poor rich persons they have no they still play with this entire system they get away because they are rich they hire good lawyer and then represented there so in light of the purity of justice what is important that honorable judges generally look and they sometimes ask the party okay, you need some kind of a good lawyer to represent amicus square and others they help that particular person so that in the idea of the purity of justice we have to see both sides who's representing whom so some way the intent if i say the intent if you take i take you to the legal services authorities act which has very clearly stated lordship when we look into the act itself the, there in the very first line it says an act to constitute legal services authorities to provide and then with the important point it emphasizes free and competent legal free and competent so the word competent is there in that particular we have to leave it to live up to the, that particular competent legal services compete free and competent it's not free legal services it uses the word free and competent legal services to the weaker sections of the society it goes further we don't need to go there but the important point which i so it doesn't say i have been speaking about the free legal aid but the statute intent of the statute is very clear in the very first line where it says free and competent legal services to the weaker sections of the society to ensure that opportunities for securing justice to ensure that to ensure that opportunities for securing justice are not denied to any citizen by any region of economic or other disabilities and to organize then it local adalat and other things so it has also local adalat it talks about section 20 the composition of local adalat which can be like you know help of the high court and the lower district court it can be time to time which we see a uh, local adalat has also become uh, in reducing the court's burden so when just to conclude because i said i have to what i'll uh, conclude and say that uh, arbitration of course and a very important tool but in entire arbitration become more or less in a uh, matter where economic interest become paramount economic interest of the parties and sometimes in the family matters like you know in the delhi high court it uses mediation services and also uh pre-litigation mediation in the country like you know in the commercial court which has come into existence there's a mandatory so like you don't waste time you go up if there's a possibility pre-mediation litigation pre-litigation media pre-mediation litigation is important in the uh, uh in the uh, in the commercial court so you see some way court is also a bear uh, that as i said just like you know today's newspaper also covered where honorable justice sanjay kishan call and Sudar, justice sudarshan both have mentioned both have requested siddharth luthra and other gentlemen to assist the amicus curator how to reduce how to reduce those in the like you know cases where a person has already undergone substantive years in the jail and the case has not been decided and he gave like you know the study i read and said in the, in the in, according to the statistics a criminal case from the, in the appeal it takes like 35 in particularly in the state of up 35 years so you can imagine so court is equally concerned to exploring and ex using 
the other alternative method and also developing some uh, on its own way. So it's there. So we, it's an equal concern and I believe that uh, uh, ADR become, uh, ADR is of course in a very important tool which will save a lot of time, energy uh, for the lot of litigants also. It is helpful to the parties and it is helpful to the court. But for me, it's access to justice very important which is the point I wanted to use under this particular occasion with the permission of the uh, principal sir here and of course in presence of uh, justice here, access to justice and human rights. So thank you very much, uh, uh, Pritam. And thank you, uh, Honorable Justice uh, Sir. You have been here, so thank you very much. Oh, we thank you for your for your ornamental lecture. It is a high standard lecture. I am really listening to you like a student. Anyway, adds up to your quality of lecture. Anyway, Sina, I am also a member. I am an Indian Law Institute. My number is one five two two. <laughs> Thank you, Lord Chief. So you, uh, so I'm blessed, Lord Chief, that you've been here, and I'm very happy. Despite your like, you know, se session is over, you stayed, so it's a great honor for me personally. Thank you. I don't know. It is I of you that is speaking in such a manner. Anyway, thank, thank you. you. I wish you all your longest life with peace and happiness. Thank you, Lord Chief. Thank you, Lord Chief. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Thank you, thank you very much, sir. Uh, Justice Tobi, sir, and uh, Mahesh, sir, uh, thank you for your uh, valuable speech, sir. Thank you very much, sir. So, Lord Sip, with your permission, I will take, a, uh, I have to leave because I'll just like another day. Yes, so, sir. it was yes. wonderful, Lord Sip. Thank you very much. We'll meet thank Lord Sip sometime whenever I come. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. It was really a thought provoking and uh, interactive session. Uh, we are really enthralled. Uh, so I think in the chat box, we are noticing that many participants are having their queries. So uh, if you, uh, like with your due permission, if I ask the speakers, eminent speakers, if uh, they can share their uh, email ID, so I think it will be well and fine. Moving to our next speaker, uh, Mrs. Sadat Musa. Mrs. Sadat Musa has completed her BA LLP honors from Aligarh Muslim University, Uttar Pradesh, LLP in Corporate Law from Jamia Millia Islamia University, New Delhi. She has Diploma in Women's Studies from Aligarh Muslim University, Uttar Pradesh. She is pursuing PhD from Bakura University, West Bengal, she has served as an assistant professor in Law College, Durgapur, West Bengal, from 2015 to 2019. Her areas of interest include law and disability, environmental law, family law, intellectual property rights, and human rights. She has several publications in edited books in national and international journals, she has attended many conferences. Presently, she is serving as an assistant professor in Haldia Law College. Moving on to you, ma'am, would you just like to share your views? Thank you so much, ma'am. Uh, issues, challenges, and opportunities. I'm sorry for the technical uh, glitches, ma'am. Uh, we are not able to hear you properly. Uh, I'd like to ask the participants to please bear with us and uh, shortly we are coming to you ma'am okay. yeah i request uh, basudev and jabbar to um, help her shut up madam so that uh, she can uh, give her presentation some disturbance are there due to unstable network Please you help him, help her. Hello, am I audible? 
Yes, now it is. Ma'am, it is visible now. All we can uh, see. Yes, now we can start. Oh, okay, sir. Okay, so my topic is online dispute resolution, and I want to start my topic. with a very famous quote by Warren E Berger where he said that the notion that ordinary people want black robed judges well dressed lawyers in fine panel court rooms as setting to resolve their dispute is not correct people with problems like people with pains want relief and they want it as quickly and inexpensively as possible so we see that adr that is the alternative dispute resolution is a method which provides justice to the people in inexpensive and quick manner as all the honorable speakers have already discussed and made it clear that in the present world everyone wants to resolve the conflict amicably we know that alternative dispute resolution is the best method which is available to the people to resolve their dispute outside the court while maintaining the peaceful relationship and this method has been backed by many laws at national and international level if we talk about international level we see that there is geneva convention 1927 there is new york convention 1958 then there is a, a un citral model law 1985 we have icc rules of arbitration and conciliation 1998 and if we talk about india then we are having the arbitration and conciliation act of 1996 which is based on un citral model we are also having section 89 of cpc and various other laws like as manoj sir has said we are also having some provision in the legal service authorities act of 1987 so on a lighter note we can see that here these two kings they also want to settle their dispute by sitting on the table playing a game and adopting a peaceful method to resolve their dispute they don't want to go for the violent means so like like this in this image every people want to settle their dispute amicably and that is why we have seen that alternative dispute resolution is becoming popular day by day now i will come to my topic that is online dispute resolution online dispute resolution is not a new thing it is just a new form of adr mechanism online dispute resolution only uses the technology by adopting various methods of alternative dispute resolution like as the earlier speakers have mentioned that there are basically four types of uh, method of adr arbitration negotiation conciliation uh, then mediation as well as lok adalat is also there so 
here what happened that in online dispute resolution same process is being taken place same uh, same process is being adopted to resolve the dispute just by using the technology and one of the important feature of online dispute resolution is that it not only resolve the dispute but it also prevent the dispute manage the dispute and it also promotes the legal health of the country we see that the online dispute resolution has already been integrated in several jurisdictions like europe united states united kingdom canada china brazil united states where we see that the government judiciary and private institutions they are working together to exploit the benefits of online dispute resolution towards enabling greater access to justice here a very comprehensive definition has been given by american bar association task force on e-commerce it is stated that online dispute resolution is a broad term that encompasses many forms of alternative dispute resolution that incorporates the use of internet websites email communications streaming media and other information technology as a part of dispute resolution process parties may never meet face to face when participating in odr rather they might communicate solely online so here we can get the proper definition of odr that here the alternative dispute the forms of alternative dispute resolution is being incorporated and the platform which are being used are internet websites email communication etc here we see that the parties they may not meet face to face but through these platforms excuse me madam yes uh, what does uh, odr represents online dispute resolution okay madam so here we see that uh, here the parties they may not uh, meet face to face but they are able to settle they, they are able to communicate with each other as well as they will able to settle the dispute amicably or peacefully now the scope of online dispute resolution here we will see that in in which type of cases the online dispute resolution is is being adopted e-commerce dispute where the value uh, where, where it is of low value and uh, it is uh, cross border transaction then there is a internet disputes intellectual property rights disputes business to business disputes industrial disputes and civil matters so in all these type of cases online dispute resolution can be adopted and the dispute can be settled amicably by the use of technology here we will see that what are the platforms which are generally adopted by the countries to use online dispute resolution system online forms online document management system settlement and negotiation software so here we will see that this online dispute resolution can be customized that means according to our requirements we can customize the software and to this the dispute can be resolved then there is a discussion board is there automated system is there uh, chat room and instant messaging email audio and video conferencing voice over ip software available in smartphone online scheduling all these things are used as a platform as a mean of online dispute resolution to settle the dispute so here we see that any use of technology to complement support or administer a dispute resolution process falls in the world of online dispute resolution now here we will see that there are some forms of online dispute resolution there are four types of online dispute resolution system which are more popular number 1 online settlement which settle the financial disputes automatically by experts 
Number two, online arbitration, which resolves the disputes by websites with the help of qualified arbitrators. Number three, online resolution, which resolves the consumer claims by emails. And number four, online mediation, which resolves the disputes by websites with the help of the qualified mediators. So uh, here, this categorization is not exhaustive. And here are the other methods of online dispute resolutions are also there like e-negotiation and e-conciliation. So here I will uh, want to point out that all these forms of online, uh, online dispute resolution are not, uh, are not fully developed but they are being into practice and two most popular one are online settlement and online mediation now we will see the benefits obviously when when uh, when a person or when a party they want to adopt any type of uh, system to resolve the dispute the first they want to see the benefit the advantages the merits to so here uh, I have discussed some of the merits of online dispute resolution. It is cost effective, quick and convenient. Just like the alternative dispute resolution mechanism, this is also very cost effective, quick and convenient. More than that. Why? Because here everything is being done on a virtual platform. The people, they, the people, they don't have to, or the parties to the dispute, they don't have to travel from one place to another. Everything is being automated and computerized. This saves time and money of the parties. Second, it is eco-friendly because all the process is paperless and it also reduces carbon emission because the people, they don't have to travel from one place to another. Next is it minimizes the jurisdictional issues because here if two parties to the disputes, they are in two different nations. They don't have to travel from one country to the another country. So here there is no hurdle of jurisdiction. The parties by sitting in their own country can, can communicate with each other and can resolve the dispute. Next, compatibility with e-commerce. As we know that e-commerce is emerging and each and everything is being done on, uh, through the e-commerce. So we see that the online dispute resolution is also very much compatible with e-commerce because this e-commerce website also provides the mean to resolve the dispute which has been arise during the e-commerce transaction and asynchronous communication here the parties they don't they don't as they don't uh, meet face to face and uh, there is no as such hearing physical hearing is there so the parties they get ample opportunity to sit to think about the reply and then they can give the reply at their own convenience. Now you will see the international perspective of online dispute resolution. Here we will see the emergence of online dispute resolution across the world. It has been started with the invention of World Wide Web in the year of 1989. Thereafter, it has been in the, in the year of 1996, the various educational institutions, they have launched the ODR project. In 1999, a very famous e-commerce platform that is eBay, they have launched a pilot project to provide online mediation facility for disputes arising on their platform. In the year 1999 to 2000, we see that a number of ODR startups, including CyberSettle and SmartSettle, launched during the internet bubble in the United States of America. In 2004, at least 115 online dispute resolution services launched worldwide. In the year of 2007, Government of Netherlands has launched Red Wizard to provide online dispute resolution services for family disputes. So here we can see that how from the, uh, from the e-commerce, the online dispute resolution is being used to settle the dispute relating to family. Then in 2009, European Committee for Standardization releases report on standardization of ODR to make the uh, online dispute resolution system systematic. 
Then in 2010, UN Citral establishes a working group to create standards for ODR. In 2012, British Columbia enacts law to establish civil resolution tribunal to provide online dispute resolution services for small claims dispute. In 2013, European Union enacts regulation to establish an ODR platform at the union level to offer single point dispute resolution services. In 2015, Committee of Human Rights and Legal Affairs of the Council of Europe published a report on the adoption of online dispute resolution. In 2016, we see that the United uh, Nations uh, UN CITRAL finalized and adopted the technical notes for ODR. In 2018, Asia Pacific Economic Cooperation adopted online dispute resolution framework to address business dispute. And in 2020, we see that Hong Kong launched ODR scheme to address dispute arising due to COVID-19 pandemic. So here we see that because of the pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic, the online dispute resolution has become more popular. Now, by analyzing the various countries, the, uh, the online dispute resolution system has been categorized in three forms. First, government-run ODR system, which is established and operated by the government. Next, the court annexed ODR system, which is a supplement to the judiciary and it helps to reduce the cases. Then private ODR system, which is being uh, owned and managed by the uh, private enterprises to resolve the dispute, which has been occurred during the e-commerce transaction. Now, here I have given the examples. These are the, these are the uh, system which is being used by these countries to resolve the dispute online. European Union, they have this, the European Union online dispute resolution platform of European Commission and by using this, they, you, they resolve the disputes relating to consumers. In United Kingdom, we have United, uh, UK financial ombudsman, financial businesses and customers matters are being resolved. In the United States, we have technology assisted group solutions by Federal Mediation and Conciliation Service. It resolved the disputes relating to labor laws. Then, court annexed ODR. So, here I have just uh, sought out some of the countries Canada, China, and United Arab Emirates. So, in Canada, we see they have British Columbia Civil Resolution Tribunal, which basically deals with motor vehicle injury cases, small claims dispute, societies and cooperative association disputes. In China, they have Beijing Internet Court, which deals with e-commerce and internet issues. In United Arab Emirates, they have Dubai International Finance Center Court, that is DIFC, and they basically deals with the commercial disputes. So all these disputes are being resolved through online. Then private online dispute resolution. In Australia, they have Australian Dispute Center, which deals, uh, which resolve the disputes relating to commercial entities, government and individuals. In United Kingdom, they have Resolver, which uh, deals with the consumer disputes. And in United States, as I have mentioned, they have Smart Settle, they have Cyber Settles, they have eBay, and uh, all these private uh, entities are there and they uh, and they decide the dispute or settle the dispute relating to family insurance, uh, real real estate, small claim, domain names, then uh, e-commerce, etc. Now we will move to the Indian perspective. So here we see that in India, a lot of initiative, though in India, the online dispute resolution is at a very nascent stage, but yes, the government is trying to adopt ODR as much as possible. So here we see that the journey is started from 2006. In 2006, National Internet Exchange of India adopted dot in domain name dispute resolution policy, which provided for online dispute resolution. In 2011, we see 
Chennai hosted 10th annual international forum on online dispute resolution. In 2016, the Online Consumer Mediation Center was established at the National Law School of India University, Bangalore, under the aegis of Ministry of Consumer Affairs, Government of India. In 2017, Ministry of Law and Justice issued a statement to urge government agencies to resolve disputes through online arbitration. Then we see that in 2018, the Ministry of MSME launched Samadhan portal to address delay of payment disputes involving micro and small enterprises. In 2019, EADR challenge was launched to identify and support ODR startups. In 2019, again, the report of the High Level Committee on Deepening of Digital Payment established by the Reserve Bank of India where it has been recommended an ODR system for resolution of digital payment dispute. In 2020, Government of India launched Vivaat Sevikas scheme for efficient resolution of tax dispute through ODR. In 2020, again, Chhattisgarh conducted the first virtual Lok Adalat and provided conciliation services through video conferencing, which was very successful. In 2020, again, the Niti Aayog established a committee under the chairmanship of Justice Retired A.K. Sikri to broad-base the use of ODR in India. In 2020, again, the VB Center for Legal Policies published a report on mainstreaming of ODR in India. And in September 2020, the Department-related Parliamentary Standing Committee on Personal, Public Rewards, Law and Justice in their report called for introduction of technology and arbitration and conciliation process. So here we see that I have divided the, the initiative of India in, 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 three, uh, in three aspects legislative initiatives, executive and judicial. So here we will see the legislative one. We see that under the Indian Evidence Act 1872, we have section 65A and 65B, which has, uh, which has adopted the, which has admit, uh, provide the conditions for the admissibility of electronic reports. Then we have Information Technology Act 2000, where under section four and section five, the uh, e-signature and uh, electronic reports are, uh, and, uh, have been recognized by the law. And then we have this personal data protection bill 2019, which is made to, pro to protect the data or for the uh, data security. If we will talk about the judicial initiative, I hope that you must be aware that these are all the things which is being taken by the uh, judiciary by their practices and by their various pronouncements. The court mission mode project is there where the effort has been made to integrate ICT across all level of the judiciary from Tessil to Supreme Court in a phased manner. Then we have this e-filing of cases where this uh, this e-court mission mode has launched e-filing portal for district courts and high courts. Then we have this e-signature where, uh, where, where it is considered as a very crucial step towards digitalizing the legal process. Then we have this integration of artificial intelligence where the Supreme Court has adopted a Vidhik Anuvad software which has the capability to trans to translate the judgment order and judicial documents from English to nine vernacular languages. Then we have, uh, then the online arbitration has also been recognized by the judiciary. E-summons, e notices, pleadings have also been recognized by the judiciary through various judgments. Then we also have e-court for the traffic chalans and for the uh, uh, digital negotiable instruments. And at the end, we are also having the e-court adalat, which I have mentioned that it has been first conducted in Chhattisgarh. Now the executive in initiatives. These are all the executive initiatives where the government is trying to adopt online dispute resolution as much as possible. In National Internet Exchange of India, Domain Dispute Settlement Mechanism, initiated by the Department of Consumer Affairs, initiated by the Department of Justice, Samadhan Portal, Draft National E-Commerce Policy, 
RBI, ODR policy on digital payment, all these things I have already discussed in the timeline. So here we see that uh, in MR Krishnamurti versus the new India Assurance Company Limited, the Supreme Court has ordered to form the mediation and conciliation planning committee to draft a law. And the key features which are suggested is the recognition of online dispute resolution mechanism for recognition and enforcement of settlement agreement, establishment of central regulating body of mediation, mediation institutes and mediators, incorporation of pre-litigation mediation, provision for enforcement of international mediation settlement. As the Manoj sir has already said that here, uh, hopefully in 2022, we will get a mediation laws. Now the challenges. So as, as we know that every technology when we try to adopt, there are certain challenges. First, uh, which I want to highlight is the lack of technology infrastructure. As we know that in India, there, are, um, uh, there, 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 there is a lack of the, uh, technology infrastructure and it is very important that the, to adopt this online dispute mechanism, it is important that we should have a robust technology infrastructure so that we can settle our dispute online. Second is digital illiteracy because of various issues, especially it has been noted that in rural areas, they, there is a very less internet subscribers are there. They don't have the mobile services. And because of this, the gap is there. Next, the lack of trust and confidence. When a new technology is being there, obviously the people, they have the uh, trust and confidence issues because they are not fully aware about this technology. There is a hesitation. They don't want to adopt the new thing easily. So by using more and more technology, this trust and confidence will be developed. And this trust and confidence will help in the business also. Lack of awareness is there. Okay, the, the, uh, the, 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 the information, the proper information relating to online dispute resolutions are not being spread properly among the rural uh, people. So that is why it is important that more and more awareness should be spread. Then a uh, negative approach of the lawyers as uh, it, is a, it is a very common thinking that uh, this, this approach that is the online dispute resolution is in conflict with the lawyers. So here I want to tell that no, it is not because if we adopt the online dispute resolution, it will be very, very beneficial for the lawyers because the, the lawyers through online can advise to their client across the globe. They don't have to go travel. They don't have to um, face any kind of jurisdictional hurdles. Then obviously we have the lack of technical experts and that is why it is very important that more and more people, more and more personals, they should be trained, not only how to use computer and mobile phone, but how to use the software, which is relating to online dispute. Privacy and confidentiality, confidentiality concerns are there because as we are sharing our data online, so there is always a concern that if our data, our documents are leaked or are circulated or our uh, uh, e-signature is manipulated, so these type of uh, concerns are there. So to, uh, uh, to restrict these type of concerns, it is important that we should have a very robust digital safety mechanism. And then uh, we are also having this archaic legal process. Like for example, we will see that uh, uh, we will see that uh, the central law, the, 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 the central government has simplified the process for payment of stamp duty through e-stamp. But the state government still requires the parties to attach the copy of e-stamp certificate to the agreement as a proof of payment of stamp duty. So here we see that there is a conflict and it makes the new process, new mechanism very difficult to operate. So here I want to conclude my presentation uh, with, a, with a good note that if India will try and meet all those challenges 
तो इट विल बी वेरी हेल्पफुल टू रिड्यूस द लॉट ऑफ केसेस एंड इट विल आल्सो बी एक्सेसिबल लाइक जस्टिस विल बी एक्सेसिबल टू ईच एंड एवरी पीपल थ्रू ऑनलाइन and apart from that it will also is doing the business and increase the trust in business so with this i want to conclude my presentation thank you so much thank you so much ma'am uh, uh, ma'am uh, would you please uh, like to answer one question that was uh, raised by the, one of the participants that uh, whether electronic module is introduced in west bengal by judiciary ma'am please yes so here we will see that as i have told you earlier that not only in west bengal but in india we can see that only uh, the online dispute resolution is is a is at a very nascent stage okay here the government is trying to uh, draft various policies the judiciary through various mechanism is trying to adopt this uh, system but if we talk about see here video conferencing we have seen that in various cases we have seen that video conferencing has been accepted as an evidence okay like if we want to ask anything uh, or if we want to take the opinion of the expert we can do the video conferencing and take this opinion and this the court admits this opinion so that is also uh one of the mode of online dispute mechanism okay like see face step by step okay uh, in in one day it is not possible because in in india it is not at all possible but yes with step to step we are trying even in west bengal we are trying to uh, adopt the online mechanism as much as possible as i have told you that uh, this uh, e lok adalat it has been held only in 2020 because of you can say pandemic and other uh, other restrictions now the people now the government and every agencies they are trying to find out the solution how to uh, how to resolve the dispute without all uh, or with following all these uh, restrictions or covid protocols okay ma'am thank you so much Okay thank you so much it was really an enriching session and engaging too uh, ma'am has clearly explained on online settlement online resolution online arbitration and mediation so uh, coming uh, to our next that uh, now i'd like to ask our principal sir to deliver his speech dr pratim sarkar has completed his ba llb honors in 2002 and nlm in 2004 from north bengal university and was adjust first class first in nlm and received a gold medal he completed his phd from burdwan university west bengal in 2018 he has published many articles in report national and international journals and law magazines he has also published many book chapters in edited books dr sarkar has also authored a book on poverty alleviation welfare scheme during covid 19 period he has participated in various seminars conferences both national and at international level his areas of interest include family law law of arbitration Labor law, women and child law. Dr. Pratim Sarkar is the principal in charge of Haldia Law College, affiliated under Vidya Sagar University, West Bengal. Over to you, sir. Please. Uh, thank you. Uh, so good afternoon to all the uh, distinguished speakers other dignitaries uh, teaching and non teaching staffs of holdia law college and other colleges and all other participants and my dear students 
I express deep sense of gratitude to Dr. Lakshman Chandra Seth, Honorable Chairman Sir of Holdia Law College and IKR, Professor Manoj Kumar Sinha, Director of Indian Law Institute, New Delhi, Honorable Justice Tofikuddin Sir, former judge of Calcutta High Court, Honorable Muhammad Abdul Halim Sir, District and Session Judge of Bangladesh High Court, and uh, Mrs. Sadaf Musa, Madam, Assistant Professor of Holdia Law College, for delivering their valuable speech. Our moderator, Mrs. Sreyoshi Jana, Assistant Professor of Holdia Law College, also deserves a special mention here. I am get grateful to the advisory committee of this international webinar. And they are Mr. Ashish Lahiri, Secretary of IKR, Mr. Sudipton Shet, Vice Chairman, Hundia Law College, Learned Advocate, Mr. Bimal Maji, Secretary, Hundia Law College, Mr. Sporshita Ponda Shet, BOG member of Hundia Law College, and Honorable Justice Tofi Guddin Sar, retired judge of Calcutta High Court. I extend my love and affection to the organizing committee of this international webinar for their extensive support in making this event a grand success. They are Mrs. Puja Hor, Assistant Registrar, um, Mrs. Sreyoshi Jana, Mr. Abdul Jabbar Hawk, um, Mr. Basudev Guho, Mr. Nirupam Bhattacharya, Mr. Uh, they are the assistant professor of this college, uh, Mr. Sudipta Kumar Mondol, senior office executive, and special thanks to Mr. Vishwajit Chakraborty, HOD, MLT of Haldia Institute of Health Sciences. I also extend my sincere gratitude to all the faculty members and administrative staffs and other members of Holdia Law College for um, successfully completing this event. Thank you all. Thank you very much. Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. I think we have already arrived towards the concluding session of this international webinar. Thank you everyone to all the participants. I extend my heartful thanks to the eminent speakers, to the advisory committee, to the organizing committee, principal in charge, sir, to all the teaching and non-teaching staff. Thank you to, for being such a patient listener. Thank you all.